Hi, I'm Liz Whiteacre. We're going to talk about how the annotated bibliography you're creating is setting a strong foundation for your research essay and how it can even transform into your essay's rough draft. Our objectives this week are to be selecting credible resources that answer your research questions. So you are starting this project with a how do I type question. How do I accomplish this goal that's going to help other people? And all of the sources that you're picking should respond to those questions. And at the end of your annotated bibliography, you should have a clear idea of the steps you can take in order to achieve your goals. We'll also be focusing on summary. I know y'all do a great job identifying quotes, integrating quotes. So we're really going to focus on our summary skills in this particular assignment. Also thinking about those credibility criteria. You discuss them in your essay at the start of the term when you were talking about how you could be a responsible researcher. And now we're really going to make sure that as we are selecting sources for our project, we are applying them so that by the end of the term, Every source that you come across, you'll be able to assess very quickly whether or not it's something you would like to use for an academic project, a personal project, project related to your professional writing. We'll also use different types of strategies in order to compose text. So the skills you're using to create your annotated bibliography are unique to that assignment, but we'll also be thinking about how we can build upon that to create your essays draft and transform it into the first uh, few steps of your, your paper so that the work you're putting in now is going to pay off big time. Here's an example of one citation. So of the 10 sources you're finding, you're building 10 of these different citations. Notice that it starts with the source citation formula. So it lets you know what source we're talking about here. It's using MLA uh, in order to present the formula. And then we have three different notes. We have a summary of the source. We have reasons why we trust that source under reliability and credibility. And then we're articulating the goals that are being met by this particular source. What is it teaching us how to do? What kind of advice are we getting? How might it be leading to other research questions, things we didn't realize we needed to find out how to do, or perhaps other resources? Some of the challenges of this assignment will happen when we are summarizing our sources. There's a big difference between observation of a source, what a source offers, and the summary of a source, what the source means, what kind of information it's sharing with us. If you look at the screen on the top, we have observation happening in this particular summary note. The writer of this says, this article shares a lot of things that students can do to make an annotated bibliography. Now, at first glance, it might feel a little bit like summary because the author of this summary, well, let's be honest, it was me. I made it for this, <laughs> this example, but I see this a lot in the first drafts of annotated bibliographies that come in. Um, all right, <laughs> full disclosure. Uh, a lot of uh, annotated bibliographies are presenting summaries like this in the past, and so I want to make sure that you don't fall into this trap where you're just saying what the article does, not what the article says. There can be um, summaries that uh, students have submitted in the past where it might say uh, this article provides a lot of data on this particular topic. And while it does do that, you have observed accurately what the source is doing, you've not told us what this article means, um, why is it talking about uh, students making annotated bibliographies, what's the stance on that, what are some of those things. And so if you look at the revised summary beneath, the summary is expressing directly what the authors of the article are sharing with us. So Adams and Smith explain the steps a student needs to take to create an annotated bibliography for an English class while pointing out how students can choose uh, to make each step an enjoyable experience if the students follow their tips. They believe that annotation during the research process can be enjoyable. 
now we're starting to see what point of view Adams and Smith has, what their research was based on, or perhaps the different strategies they are trying to help students employ that, yeah, annotated bibliographies can be fun when they're not perhaps being really frustrating. So while you are looking through the draft of your annotated bibliography, and certainly when you're helping out your fellow writers and researchers during peer review, watch for observation versus summary in those notes and make sure it's clear what the article is about, not just what it is offering us. Another thing that can happen is in-text citation is missing. We'll see at the end of this presentation how you can take a citations annotation and turn it into a paragraph for your essay. If you're not using attribution in your notes, it can be so easy to miss, forget, um, not accurately put those notes in during the drafting process. Even if you're not making an annotated bibliography, it is very important. You are carefully uh, keeping track of the sources that you are summarizing and directly quoting from. If you copy and paste from a website, those quotes need to go around what you've just put into your document right away. And then you need to make sure that you're indicating where is this coming from. For example, in our top summary there, we just have the authors they believe. If we copy this out from underneath the source citation formula, this could be anyone, especially if we've had a couple different sources talking about this topic. And it can also be easy to forget, since the writer, myself, I wrote the sentence, it can be easy to forget that I was summarizing somebody else's ideas. So in the notes, you need to make sure you're using those keywords so that you are setting yourself up for success. In the bottom citation, we have put the author's names, Adams and Smith, in the sentence, in the first example. And then in the second sentence, they believe that annotation during the research process can be enjoyable. We're creating the parenthetical citation and putting those keywords in there. The reason why we're doing it for both sentences, again, is as a reader, I can't necessarily guess. If you're putting a citation at the end of a paragraph, I don't know if it's retroactive and how many sentences back it goes. So it's always important that you are keeping the keyword or what the source is with the information that you're borrowing from it. So it's clear to readers how those different sources ideas are integrated into your own writing. When you're thinking about trustworthiness, why are you collecting these sources for your project? It needs to go beyond it's saying what I want it to say. Um, you've already spent some time thinking about this with your responsible researcher essay, so it's important you think about how are you articulating the reliability, credibility, the trustworthiness of the sources that you're collecting for projects. If you look at the top, this is a weaker discussion of trustworthiness. Um, saying a source has authors, it's a .org, doesn't necessarily indicate to your readers of the annotated bibliography why those are good things in this particular case. Uh, sometimes you might have the source has no authors, but it's still really credible because of other reasons. Maybe it's been written by an entity that you trust, a government agency, um, an organization, a company, um, and they're not naming individual authors, but you still really trust who it's coming from, the, the publisher of the information. So if we look at the second example, we have a stronger discussion of trustworthiness. I trust this resource because Adams and Smith are both teachers who volunteered their time with the Students Helper Organization, a non-for-profit organization developed to help college and high school students online in a variety of different subjects and develop their webpage based on the resources that they use in their English classes. Adams in high school and Smith in college. This is also a recently updated page, so I know that these strategies are currently being used and all the tips they've provided have been tried and found successful by students in their classes. 
So here I have four really good reasons to trust. I have the expertise of the authors. I have the reputation of the organization that they are associated with. I have um, the date of publication or it's still relevant. And they've also provided enough evidence and data that what they are presenting as good things to do are grounded in research. Now, we'll see in a moment when we start to build our paragraphs that collecting this kind of information about the source now can be really helpful to you when you want to let your readers know why you trust your source in your paper. And then the third type of note in our annotated bibliography is connecting a discussion of how the source is helping us to the source. This is pre-writing for your paper, frankly. You're starting to think about, okay, what am I taking from the source? What am I learning from the source? How is this source helping me take action? And if you are doing that kind of thinking and pre-writing and planning while you're taking your notes and using your sources, you're creating incredible connections that will be much easier to see when you sit down and maybe you outline your paper or you do a free write from your paper or you build your paper from your annotated bibliography itself. So let's take a look at a weaker discussion of connection. Here the goal says, the source gives students advice on how to complete their assignment. The authors give lots of examples that I could use in my project. All right. It's not clear to me as a reader, what is this writer's project? What examples were most helpful? How do those examples help the writer know how to act? Um, and so we can explain that in our notes and taking that extra two or three minutes, again, you're going to see is a big payoff. So a stronger discussion of that connection would be I was excited when I found this resource because it taught me ways in which I can help myself improve my grade on this assignment. Also learned how students I will work with in the future can use techniques when they create any assignment that needs resources and notes on them. Since the goal of my paper is to help students learn how to improve their composition grades when I'm a teacher, this will be valuable resource because I'll be able to provide some specific examples in my paper. This evidence will support my claim that students can improve if they try new study techniques. Another thing you'll want to watch for in your draft as you're getting it ready for peer review and during peer review are a few kind of MLA housekeeping things. You'll want to make sure that those big citations are listed in alphabetical order by the very first word that's touching that left margin, just like you would alphabetize a works cited page. Hanging indents are used to visually organize the page, just that we saw at the beginning of this presentation, where you kind of have your citation sticking out and then all of the notes, everything associated with that source is tucked underneath. MLA source citation formulas are used for this project and in-text citation is used. So that keyword for your in-text citation would be the first element that is introduced in the source citation formula. That could be the author's last name and we're going to share up to two authors name. Once we hit three, we use that at all to let writers know, readers know that we have multiple writers. Or if there are no authors listed, then we're looking at that first title that is in. Um, it might be the title of a web page. Um, or if we're looking at an entire site, then it might be the website. So whichever one is listed first, that's what we're going to use in our notes and in our paragraphs to let readers know what source the information is coming from. Right. So I'm going to switch to a different document and show you how you can transform your annotated bibliography into uh, uh, the start of the draft of your paper. The first thing that I would want to do as I'm beginning to work with my annotated bibliography is to think about 
how each source fits in to my discussion. So I might on a piece of paper uh, do a flow map or a quick outline. Um, it might even be helpful to print out one citation on a page and order them in a way that makes sense. So I'm thinking about, okay, in order to help people in this way, I need to step one, step two, step three. So once the ideas are ordered and organized, You'll also identify probably uh, some holes in the information you've collected. You realize, okay, to do this step, I need to know how to do this, and I didn't look it up on my first pass. You are welcome to add sources to your project as you begin the, the drafting phase if you need to go and look something up while you're writing to be able to talk about it. That's no trouble. Copy. And I'm going to insert blank page. You'll notice that you already have your work cited page started with the annotated bibliography. You're only going to include the sources from your annotated bibliography that fit with the paper. So if there's a source that you decide isn't as helpful to you because maybe you ended up going in a different direction, you wouldn't list it here and instead you find a different source that was more helpful. Now if I want to think about my discussion here, I'm going to get rid of that formatting so that it's something that I can uh, start to paragraph with. I'm not going to lead with my summary because I need to let my readers know what I'm about to talk about in this particular paragraph. So I might come up with my topic sentence at this point, and this might be coming from that outline I did. Sorry, I'm not so good at typing and talking at the same time. Oh, I've got my little text box there. All right. So now I have shared what am I going to talk about. Here I have a reliability and credibility discussion of the source that I want to present. And so I can pull from this to put up into my paragraph. Um, and so I would want to introduce this. Um, I'm about to introduce why am I about to start talking about Adams and Smith. I need to get back to my bold icon there. Um, Adams and Smith are both teachers who volunteer their times. All right, I'm, I'll, I'll clean up the prettiness of that. Um, and here I might sh choose to say, because I just used their names, they explain in their article. I'm going to pull this up. And I know that I need to make sure I put my keyword back in there. And I'm going to flip flop that again. 
Uh, a nice thing about MLA citation and having the ability to put the information about the source into the sentence or into the keyword is that you can have some sentence variety and make it interesting so you don't feel like you keep repeating the same thing over and over again with your sentences. All right, I included why I trust a little bit in there for my researchers, uh, why I picked their article. Um, and then the next thing I'd want to turn to is an explanation of why am I telling you about Adams and Smith? And if I've done my job in my research goals, I already have a foundation for that discussion. And this comes back to that idea of the warrant or the explanation, the why. And so I'm going to start just by pulling this out. Okay. I can't include everything in here because it's not as pertinent for my draft, um, but I can read through and I have the start here. Here I might say since my goal in the future is to help students, uh, this will be a valuable strategy. To provide students to students can improve if they try new study techniques. Whoa, look how that one citation became. A paragraph that can go right into my essay. So if you're doing this for all 10 of your sources and you're including an introduction and then you're con including um, a conclusion that uh, shares the significant of your significance of your project, then you're really able to move from the annotated bibliography into a draft of your paper that's going to be very close to the page requirement. I am going to be providing this example of the text and the original citation I started from in the resources page in the folder that has this PowerPoint presentation. If you'd like to take a little bit more time and check it out, we're gonna come back here. To end on. Um, so looking ahead, I know that it is rigorous trying to get all of these sources, get them organized, think about them, write up notes on them. But in my opinion, I think the effort is totally worth it. The effort you're putting in right now is going to set you up for an outstanding research paper where you have already synthesized your sources, you've thought about why they're meaningful, you've thought about in advance how they're helping you meet your goal. So you're really going to proceed confidently with your first person narrative. Your I plan to do this and let me tell you how paper. Looking ahead, we are going to be working on revisions of the annotated bibliography, participating in peer review so that you get feedback from your partners. Don't forget, I have office hours and I'm very happy to help you review anything for your annotated bibliography or show you in your own work how you can get started turning those annotations into your rough draft. So don't hesitate to get in touch. I cannot wait to see how your research transforms into your paper. And thanks so much for teaching me about your topic and your life goals along the way.